or the tag. What's the purpose of it? Here's what happened. Because this is the act of 1984. So it started 1984. So the question is, what was happening before 1984? So before 1984, for example, a county or a state, let's assume a county, would receive federal funding from various agencies. For example, the county would receive funding from the Department of Justice. Uh, they might receive funding uh, from the Department, who knows, of Education, because they want to uh, uh, educate their prisoners. And they might receive money from another department. It doesn't matter what department. So notice, so the county, the county, the local county received money from three different federal agencies. Before 1984, each of these agencies will have to do a separate audit. Well, well, you already know that this is not very efficient because you're going to have three different audits. Why? Because each agency wants a different audit, wants a different audit. So what they decided to do is they decided to say, well, if you receive money from federal agencies, guess what? We're going to have a single audit. Okay? We're going to have a single audit. So before 1984, the state and local government and not for profit and to tell you the truth, not-for-profit were not included until recently. Receiving financial aid from several federal agencies has multiple audit. And again, this is very inefficient. So the initial single audit sought to impose one set of stringent audit guidelines so that only one audit would have to be conducted to satisfy multiple grantor agencies. So what's going to happen if you if you fall under the single audit and you receive money from federal agencies, you just you just need one audit. Now we're going to talk about how that audit works, but you just need one audit. Okay. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Far Hat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So the single audit of 1984, what, what, what office administered this program? The Office of Management and Budget, or OMB. So the purpose of it is to replace grant by grant audit with a single audit. So basically have one comprehensive audit, as I just said. It's the, the purpose of it is to improve the efficiency and effective of a governmental audit effort. So because you don't want to do duplicate the work, be more efficient, have one audit. Federal agencies must agree to this process. So the federal agencies that are given the money, they must agree to this, this process, and we assume they agree. Uh, apply to both direct and indirect recipient of federal money. If you receive direct or indirect money, indirect means you receive money from another government agencies, but that government agency got the money from the federal government. So in, 19, in 1996, the 7, 750,000 is the threshold. So if you receive more than 750000 we're going to talk a little bit more about this amount. Once again, this amount changes from year to year. Okay, and we're going to talk about single award versus multiple award. Okay, in, in 1996, higher education, state and local government, as well as not-for-profit entities now are included under the single audit. Before, the higher education and not-for-profit were not included, only state and local government. Now, higher education and not-for-profit, they are included under the single audit. Okay, so the circular A, it's just, uh, A133, and related compliance provide implementation guidance. So where do, you, where do auditors look for implementation guidance? Guidance, something called circular A133. So let's take a look at who qualify for this single audit. So here's what you need to ask yourself. Did the non-federal entity expend, means spent, you might receive more, but spent 750000 or, or, or more of federal awards. Now again, the 750, you might be looking at this lecture two, three years from now, it might go up to a million, it might go up to three million, it doesn't matter. If the federal agency did not receive, if the federal agency did not receive, no, not receive, did not spend, expend, which is spend, 750,000 in federal award, then no single audit is required. So all what you need is a program specific audit, only GAGAS and only gas and GAGAS audit. So basically you need to do your regular audit, which what we saw in the prior session, what I told you to view, and the governmental audit standard regular audit. Okay, now if you receive money from, you still, let's assume, here, here we have to be more specific, let's assume the Department of Education 
um, gave you gave you three hundred thousand dollar and that's the only thing you receive and you spend guess what you, you don't qualify because it's below it's below it's below the amount below the threshold so you just do gas regular audit and you do governmental audit just regular audit no single audit now the answer is if you did receive and spend seven hundred fifty thousand or more okay then you have to ask yourself did the non-federal entity expand federal award only under one federal program so is this one federal program let's go back down here and assume the department of education gave you eight hundred thousand dollars but only one agency so one agency sent that's the only money you received okay and only one federal agency would it not require a financial audit and there's no financial audit they did not require a financial audit okay you're and you did not meet other requirement, other requirement for the single act, and properly elected the program specific audit. And you decided as the county to go with the program specific audit. So if you receive money from one agency, and you don't usually you don't have to have an audit, just because the nature of your government, you, you don't have to have an audit. Then under those circumstances, there's no single act. All what you do is you do a program specific audit. So because it's only the Department of Education that gave you the money. So you could elect to do still elect one specific program audit under certain circumstances okay so notice only one federal program so you receive money from one agency now what happened if you receive money from more than one federal agency well and assuming you exceed the threshold then this is where the single audit is required so the single audit is when you receive money from multiple agency and the amount is more than 750,000 and obviously you spend it and that 750 it changes from year to year so let's go back to that diagram that we that we looked at in the prior session and basically every government agency usually local and state government as well as higher education not for profit usually get an audit regular audit that's according to gas generally accepted accounting principle and they follow the AICPA then government agencies what they do is they in addition to the gas they get gagas the government auditing standard they get a written report on their internal control structure and they have to prepare a report about their compliance with laws and regulation so level one this is level one plus level two this is what we did in the prior session level one plus level two equal to the government auditing standard or gagas now if you meet the third requirement where you're receiving money from multiple federal agencies then you have to do the third level this is level three and once you have all those three levels together this is what the s a, a is the single audit standard now you have to comply you have to comply you have to conduct a single audits audit standard single SAA the single audit act okay so now you have to comply you have to show compliance with major program you have to show compliance with major program you have to report on your internal control for the major program and most importantly you have to report on the schedule schedule of expenditure where did you spend that money so if you qualify under the single audit act you have to do one you have to do three two and you have to do three and this is what i mean by the saa you now you qualify you're supposed to do that additional work okay so bear in mind that seven hundred and fifty thousand is is new because when the program started the threshold was one hundred thousand so now it's seven hundred and fifty thousand in nineteen ninety six. Circular eight thirty three was revised and replaced with circular eight twenty eight. The current threshold for the single audit is federal aid, federal financial assistance expenditure. Notice you spend it of over seven fifty. If you spent over seven fifty, okay. If the federal assistance is over seven fifty, but still from one agency, remember. If you're receiving more money but only from one single agency like the department of education or the department of justice you could still do a program audit rather than the single audit so you could go back and do a program audit basically where the federal agency just they're only asking to audit their program their expenditure okay remember one agency you don't have to do the single audit a single audit key requirement again what, what's required for the single audit you, you are required an annual financial statement conducted by an independent auditor and competent the entity's financial statement and the schedule schedule of expenditure of federal awards so you do basically a gas gap the generally accepted accounting principle gagas the generally accepted government auditing standard and you do the third one which is expenditure of federal award the saa so basically you have to do that you have to 
present your financial statement, fair presentation of the financial statement and the schedule of federal award. Again, same thing, basically saying the same thing. But you still have to study the internal, the evaluation of the internal control, understand the compliance requirement by major program. Basically, I'm rest restating the same thing. Assess control risk and the structure of control test. Federal and non-federal pass-through agencies are assigned certain responsibility for compliance. So sometimes what happens is certain federal agencies, they want to make sure you are compliant with certain rules and regulations. Those are very program specific. The question is who receives the report, who receives and who oversees the process? Well, we have something called cognizant agency. So an entity that's, that's given you 50 million or more of federal award, if let's assume you have multiple awards, but one agency Again, I use the Department of Education because they give a lot of money to colleges and universities. If they give 50 million or more, guess what? Then you have to report to this cogniz cognizant agency. And usually that's the one that's going to monitor the process. So you're going to have multiple awards from different agencies, but the Department of Education gave you more than 50 million. Therefore, it's, a, it's responsible for the whole process. If there is no cognizant agency, which is no one has given you more than 50 million, an entity is assigned as an oversight agency. And who do you think it's going to be assigned? The agency with the largest grant. So the agency that gives you the most, the most money is the agency that you should report to, and that's the agency that look at, uh, make sure you are in compliance with the program. Now, again, we talked about the program, major program, but we haven't defined a major program. So how do, how do we define as auditor what, what is a major program or according to the Single Audit Act? Well, what is a major program? The auditor must identify what's a major program. So here's what's going to happen. It's a risk-based approach. The auditor must group programs using a risk-based approach. So we're going to divide our programs into type A, which what we say type A is large program, and type B, smaller program, and low risk program. So type A and type B, okay? Type A program, obviously, because it's larger, receive closer auditing than type B, okay? Why? Because it's larger, obviously. Now, how do we determine what is a type A? What is a type A and what is a type B? Now, remember, type A, you decide on the dollar amount, but it cannot be less than 750. Okay, so it cannot be less than 750. So anything above 750 is type A. But the auditor, depending on how large is the, uh, is the entity, they could say 2.5 million. Anything above 2.5 million will consider it type A. Generally, the auditor is required to express an opinion on compliance on major program, which must add up to 40% of the federal fund expend by the audited organization. Well, once you identify the programs, the auditor must audit how much? 40% of the funds expended by the audited organization. Now, bear in mind, if the audited organization is determined to be a low-risk organization, this percentage goes down to 20%. If we're looking at $5 million, that's the amount. And if it's generally speaking, we're going to have to audit 40% of this. And 40% of this is $2 million. If the organization is happens to be low risk, identified as low risk, well, we're going to take 5 million of the total amount times 20%. And this will be one million it means less work for the auditor because the organization is considered low risk now what is the minimum threshold the minimum threshold for type a program begins at 750 as i told you 750 is the minimum but you could go higher okay but adjusted upward on a, based on a percentage of federal funds expanded so just they could go higher so type a program are considered always type a program are considered major program unless they are determined to be low risk so we have type a and we said type A is always major. Major means we need to look at it closely. Now, type A could be considered low risk. How do we determine type A is low risk? Well, guess what? If type A, this is year three, in year two and year one. So in year one and in year two, type this program was audited and they got clean, clean opinion. So the past two years, this program that we I, well, that's, that's considered a major program received a clean opinion in the past two years. In other words, in the past two years, there was no major audit finding. There was no problem with their internal control. Therefore, although it's a large program, it's a type A program, it's 750 and plus, okay? But now we're going to consider it low risk. Why low risk? Because it's doesn't have, it's had, it has clean opinion. So the past two years, it's good. Now we could look at it as kind of a type B, low risk, okay? Type B 
type B program, which is less than 50, are included as major program. So sometimes they are included as major program only if the auditor determined that they are high risk. How do, how do we determine it's a high risk? Well, they don't have a clean opinion. Uh, they're having some problem with their internal control. Then type B could be considered, type B could be considered high risk. Okay, so we could have type A, low risk, high risk. We could have type B, low risk, high risk as well. Okay, and this, a risk assessment must be made of type B program that exceed 25% of type A threshold. So if it exceeds 25%, so if it's the size of type B is 25% of type A threshold, then we have to do a risk assessment for type B. Now let's take a look at an example. That's the best way to, to understand how type A and type B work. An entity is determined to be low risk. So the entity is low risk, it's not high risk, and has, has five programs. To be low risk has five programs, two types A and three types B. So we have type A program, um, uh, housing and urban development, 750,000, audited last two years with no prior, no major control problems or compliance problems. So this is type A, this is large. This is large type A, but notice it's low risk. Hopefully you see this. How did I know it's low risk? Because the last year with no, usually it's the last two years, last year with no controlled uh, problems or compliance finding. EPA, 800,000, not audited in the past two years. Automatically, if it's not audited, it cannot be low risk because we don't know what's going on. So this is a major program. It's major and high risk. It's type A and high risk because, again, it was not audited. Okay. We have three type B program. Department of Education. Notice they're less than four, less than seven fifty. Type B. Uh, Department of Energy three hundred and ten, and Department of Agri of Agriculture uh, ninety thousand dollar. Okay. So now what's going to happen? We're going to determine what program should we audit. What program should we audit? Okay. So let's add them all up. Let's add the programs up. So if we take 750 plus 800,000 plus 400,000 plus 310 plus 9, so 400, 800. So we have in total, if we add up all the programs, they add up to 2,350,000. So all the programs together, A and B, 2,350,000. If we take 2,350,000, multiplied by 40%, it means we have to audit 940,000. Which program do we have to audit? Well, the first thing we're gonna audit is the EPA, which is 800,000, because not audited during the past two years, and it's a major program above 750. Now, we're gonna need an additional 140,000. Well, we can also audit the HUD the HUD program 750 and get done. This way we exceeds 940,000 or we can add the Department of Education, the 400,000, which is gonna put us above 940 or we can add the Department of Energy, which will put us above 9, 940. Now notice if we select the Department of, Africa, of Agriculture, we're gonna be below the 940. We have to select another program as well. So notice what we said here. The EPA will must uh, grant must be audited. And it, it does not meet the low risk, not having been audited in the past two years. And the auditor must choose something else to add up to 140,000 to add up to 940,000. Now, if any of the program B are deemed high risk, they would be selected for audit. So if any of the program specifically in here is high risk, Department of Education, Department of Energy, or Department of Agriculture, then they will have to be selected. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, farhatlectures.com, whether you are taking your CPA exam or taking accounting courses. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.